Today we're going to be looking at the follow-up to the MM711 by Cooler Master. Now, what makes this different? Well, the MM711 basically became famous for looking like a cheese grater. They put loads of holes in it to make it basically way less. Well, what they've done and done is filled those holes back in and called it the MM712. So let's have a look at the front of the box. So it's got the model number there. You can see the mouse. It says it's a matte black and it says fill in the blank. So basically what they've done is where the previous model, the 711, had loads of holes in it to reduce the weight. Now what they've been able to do on this mouse is fill those holes in so it doesn't look like the cheese grater, but keep that low weight. So it's still under 59 grams, which is pretty good. And it tells you about all the other bits on the front, like Bluetooth, RGB, 2.5 gigahertz, and so forth. The back of the box is pretty straightforward. It's multilingual. It shows a picture of the device as well as some bullet points about what it actually does, but it can be hard to read as some of the writing is red on a purple slash blue multicolored background. So inside the box, you've got the mouse, which came in a little foam bag. You've got the cable, which is USB type A to USB type C. You've got a USB type A and a USB type C adapter. So obviously that converts from one to the other. And then you've got the manual as well. The cable is two meters long, USB type A on one end and USB type C on the other. Obviously the type C plugs into the mouse. You can use it as a actual cable for the mouse or you could use it just to charge it up, whichever you prefer. The cable is anti-snag, so it's sort of braided. They call it ultra weave. So it's quite hard to see on the camera, but probably on the B-roll you'll see it a bit better. But well, basics is it won't snag on things on your desk and also because of the way it's designed it doesn't seem to make much noise when it is rubbing against things like your mouse mat. Let's have a look at the mouse itself. First thing you can see, it's got an RGB effect here. You can change that between set colors or different styles by pressing the mouse button down and pressing the forward and the backward buttons on the side. It changes the effects and the actual colors so you can have it how you want it. Now you do have obviously your traditional left and right mouse buttons, but these have got optical micro switches, which basically means that it uses a laser sensor in there instead of a mechanical switch, which means it can work three times quicker than your traditional mechanical switch. So it means they're more responsive basically when you press them. You do have a wheel as well. So you will obviously scroll up and down, works as standard. It does work as a button as well. I uh, have noticed though, if you press it on the right to the center, it doesn't do anything, but if you do press it on the left to the center, so pushing it to the side, it does actually pick up as a left. It does actually pick up as a central mouse button press as well. And then you have got the backwards and forwards buttons there. Otherwise, that's pretty much it to look at. There isn't any RGB underskirts or anything like that. Obviously, you've got the connection on the front to charge it or use it via the cable if you wish. Let's have a look at the bottom of the mouse. So first of all, you've got free glide feet. These are PTFE mouse feet, or 95% anyway, PTFE, which means that the mouse will slide and glide very well over the mouse mat. Normally people will go out and buy these separately and add them to the current mouse to make them better. You actually get these built into the mouse automatically. You don't have to go out and spend any extra money on these feet and it allows it to glide with ease. Also on the bottom, you've got a pair button. That's for when obviously you're using Bluetooth and you need to pair it up to a device. And you do have a three way switch there where you can change it between Bluetooth 2.4 gigahertz wireless, which is you the wireless adapter, which is hidden under here, which we'll get to in a minute, or you can use it via a cable. On the bottom, you also have the sensor, which is here, which is obviously the bit what scans your mouse mat or whatever surface you're using it on. It does seem to have a ring around it, which is made of the same material as the slide feet. So I hope that helps it slide across your desk and doesn't come across any slight bumps or anything on your table. So it should help with that. Now the sensor is 19,000 DPI. It's a Pixar sensor 3370, which are renowned to be really good. So it's nice to have that on there. 19,000 DPI is really, really good. There is a button at the bottom here, which will let you change between the DPI. It's a shame it's on the underneath of the mouse because I do know a few gamers who like it on the top and so they can actually change the DPI between two presets while they're in a certain game. On this one, you'd have to turn it upside down or at least lift it off the desk to press the button.
The little wireless receiver, if you wish to use it on the wireless mode, you can actually access from here. I would have liked to see it magnetic personally, but you have to take this little bit of plastic off and then it jumps out at you. But there it is. It does go back in that hole there, so you can keep it there. It would have been nice for it to stay in that hole. It doesn't, so you have to make sure you don't lose this little plastic grip on the bottom or plate to keep it in place. And it seems to be a little bit difficult to get it back in. There we go, to get it back in sometimes. So just bear that in mind. Don't you lose that piece of plastic there, especially if you're wanting to keep your wireless adapter inside. The battery inside of this will last 181 hours, according to them. Obviously, I'm presuming that's if the lighting has been turned off, which is pretty good, and that's on Bluetooth mode. If you do use it on the 2.4 gigahertz mode, which is with the little receiver, it'll last 80 hours. Again, I'm guessing that's with the RGB lighting turned off, because usually you turn those on and you can pretty much half the battery life, if not more. So just bear that in mind. But again, good thing about this is if your battery does run out, you can grab the cable, plug it in, and run it on cable mode, so, well, hey, you've got best of both worlds there. So we're going to do a sound test now. This is the wireless microphone we're using. I will sound a little bit different here because we're not editing the sound. And again, you're hearing me from a slight distance away from the microphone. So it sounds a little bit different. But we're just going to press the buttons on the mouse so you can hear what it actually sounds like. The microphone is exactly 20 centimeters away from the mouse. And as I says, this footage is totally unedited. So the left mouse button, the right mouse button, the wheel scrolling forward and backward, using the wheel as a button, the back button, and the forward button. And one thing to note, when you do squeeze the mouse in different areas, it doesn't creak or groan like a lot of lightweight mice do, so that means it's pretty good build quality as well. And then sliding it across the table is fairly silent. Okay, to the software, you download it from the manufacturer's website, scroll towards the bottom, you'll find the download link. When you install it, make sure you disable your security. So, for example, if you're running Norton, McAfee, Kaspersky, whatever it may be, make sure you do disable that because a lot of the time, security software can interfere with things like this, especially when you're doing firmware updates. Talking about firmware updates, the first thing we did when we installed the software, it asked to do a firmware update on the actual mouse itself, which, if you don't know what firmware is, it's basically where it updates the software in Inside the mouse itself which can help it perform better or fix any bugs and so forth. Once the software has done the firmware update then it takes you to this page here. You can basically go on to different options at the top. So overview tells you information about your computer, what's inside it, like your graphics cards, the usage, different things like that. You've got system lighting, you can create profiles, configurations and stuff. But the main thing we're going to be dealing with is the mouse on the left. So you can see I've also got a Cooler Master mouse mat here but we're clicking on the mouse there if it doesn't show on the left click the logo at the top left side and it'll pop out and away you go so click on it bear in mind it does take about five seconds for it to show up it is a bit slow when it does come on it will generally go to this page here on this page here it shows your battery level at the top corner it doesn't give you a percentage it just gives you a rough idea though you have a reset button to reset anything you've changed and that's the same for each page you can slide the sleep mode up and down so you can tell the mouse to turn itself off after five minutes to save battery and then you've got a low power mode it doesn't exactly say what that does it just says it goes into low power mode i'm guessing it turns off stuff like the rgb lighting and stuff like that maybe even drops a dpi i'm not too sure that but it doesn't actually say specifically what that does buttons you can configure your buttons so if you want the browser backwards button to do something else like run a macro or a multimedia like open your email rapid fire whatever you can change it here even set it to do a certain dpi levels if you want you've got options for the mouse combo on and off as well as a button up here that tell, tells you about the mouse combo there and as you can see the buttons and options disappear and then you've got performance at the top so you can change everything to how sensitive it is so all the way up to 19,000 dpi and you can change each of the modes so if you didn't want the lowest option to be 400 dpi you could have it say 800 or a thousand dpi and then a step between each one it's totally up to you or you could disable all but two let's say you only use two 
DPI modes, one for playing first person shooters and then one for playing doing just office work. You can set it for two different ones. So you just disable those by unticking those boxes there. You've got your polling rate, 125 hertz all the way up to a thousand. You've got angle snapping as well. Lift off distance, so how much you lift it off the desk depends on how the sensitivity of the mouse actually picks up the actual desk or not, or your mouse pad. You've got double click speed, left, right, button response time, pretty standard stuff. And you've even got option on there to do or calibrate it to a surface or tune it as they call it. So I'm just gonna close that. You've got lighting modes, so you can change the light and you've got static, so you can have it as specific color which is pretty good you've got breathing mode again it just breathes in and out so it's like it slowly goes off and back on and again you can choose specific colors and then you've got the color cycle where it just changes between all the colors and then off bear in mind if you've got it on off the battery will last you longer and there isn't much lighting on the mouse it's really just where you're going to put your hand so while you're using the mouse you're probably not going to ever see the rgb lighting anyway but there we go then you've got options for macro so if you click on macro you can create a macro on there you can import export macros so if you're playing something like an mmo game or something like that you can set it up so when you press the uh, browser back button it does five or six different commands all in one go and then you can set profiles for doing different things so you can have it set up for a first person shooter an mmo strategy game and then you could have some creative work and then just a standard web browser and so you just click a button and then it will run that basically profile so you don't have to reconfigure it for each game every single time otherwise the mouse is very good very light very slides very well i must admit i am liking it a lot lot i'm not sure if it'll be a daily driver or not with that dpi button on the bottom but maybe i can configure it to where i do actually like it with that but i must admit i do really like this and i do really recommend this mouse i hope you enjoyed this video and know i did why not check out one of our other videos by clicking this box up here or this one just down here otherwise you can give us a thumbs up like subscribe comment below let us know what you think and we'll see you next time